Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses, and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk, and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, 
and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad, and he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works to show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias, and others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced, and pleased Herod, and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king, and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry. Yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner, and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head in a charger, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse, and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, and told him all things, both what they had done, and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship, privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and outwent them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away, that they may go into the country round about, and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread, and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five, and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and brake the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship, and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, 
be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, and ran through that whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered, into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets, and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Rapture to children, Jordan, to enter into rest. 
Praise the Lord. If you are justified by the faith of Jesus, I said, Praise the Lord. And you live by the faith of Jesus. We need to understand that we're identified with Christ, and then everything he had is love, his faith, his power, his authority, his anointing is made available for us because he emptied himself of his divine nature, emptied himself of his eternal sonship and then he came making of himself of no reputation and then he lived by the word and he lived by faith and he lived by love and that same love and that same faith and that same power we can live by the faith of Jesus I can I can justify it redeemed living by the faith of jesus be it fulfilled in every life in jesus name let's pray together father we thank you for this moment thank you for your word thank you for the workers retreat and thank you for the way you blessed everyone we're asking oh lord that you will seal up all the blessings you have given us in jesus name some taps leak very much some drums containers leak very much and we pray that your power your knowledge your revelation your faith your love will not leak out of our lives in jesus name something was mighty and powerful but by talking 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 all the power leaked out we pray lord whatever will cause any crack in a vessel that will make the power the knowledge the revelation to leak out and then when the time comes to stand and to do what you want us to do the power is all gone i pray that all that will be taken from every life in jesus name lord retain the faith in us the love in us the revelation in us the knowledge in us that will live by the faith by the law by the grace by the might by the power of jesus living within us in jesus name confirm each in every life in jesus name we pray and the people of god said amen god bless you you can sit down we're coming to the final message of the workers retreat and the message is faith for daily fullness from the rock faith for daily fullness from the rock you know the story of the children of israel as they were passing through they had no water to drink there was only a rock and the lord knew this ahead of time and he was doing that for them that we will understand this is what is available for us and he cried to the lord and then the lord told moses to strike the rock and that water will come out abundantly and sufficient for everyone and the water came out and it drank and every time i did there was another time when the same thing happened and god says speak to the rock and the water will come out we need to have faith in the lord that every day and every moment no matter the point of the journey we're going through you'll have sufficient for every day I will have sufficient for every day. Uh, we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, we're looking at unknown delays in life through shattering rocks. Why do we have delays? We we'll pray. Why do we have delays? We we'll plan. Why do we have delays? We we'll project. Why do we have delays? There are reasons for delays 
in, in life through the shattering rocks. Number two, undeniable drinking for life from the smitten rock. Christ is the one that is meeting for us and then the water of life comes out and the water of refreshing comes out and the river of uh, restoration, rejuvenation, renewal of your strength, that water comes out and every time all the tiredness is taken away undeniable drinking for life from the smitting of number three unsurpassable destiny you have a destiny i have a destiny and that destiny is unsurpassable nothing else you can dream about nothing else you can plan nothing else you can have for yourself but the destiny that the almighty god himself has appointed for you unsurpassed unsurpassable destiny after life with the spotless rock let's look at point number one unknown delays in life through shattering rocks we're coming to exodus chapter 17 reading from verse 1 and all the congregation of the children of israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the lord and he pitched in refidim and there was no water for the people to drink there was no water for the people to drink look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says wherefore the people did charge they argued and they complained and they almost fought with moses and said give us water that we may drink and moses said unto them why chide ye with me wherefore do ye tempt the lord then in verse 3 it says and the people thirsted there for water and the people murmured against moses and said wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst look at verse 4 in verse 4 and moses cried unto the lord he did not charge or the people he did not fight or the people there are some shepherds they fight or the sheep there are some pastors, they fight for the members of the flock. There are some leaders, they fight for the people they are leading. Every time argument, every time chiding, every time fighting. But Moses had the Spirit of God and he knew that a leader must be above the people. If the people are crying, the leader who is above the people will not cry. If the people are complaining, the leader who is above the people will not complain. If the people, if they are fighting and they are childish, the leader who is above the people will not fight, will not complain, will not be childish. And so we hear Moses here, and Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto these people? They be almost ready to stone me. Those people were forgetful people. They forgot all that Moses had done and they forgot all the gracious things that came to them through Moses just for water. In a moment of time, they were ready to pick up stones and stone Moses. They'd be almost ready to stone me. But the Lord took control of the situation. In your life, the Lord will take control of the situation. When there are needs, biting needs for your life, for your family, for the local church, for the general church, instead of complaining and murmuring like them 
as we look to the Lord and we pray to the Lord, the Lord will take control over everything in your life, family, and church in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at the attitude that preceded their demand. They wanted water, that's good. They wanted provision of abundance to satisfy them, that's good. But the attitude that preceded their demand, that wasn't right. Number two, the attribute that pervaded their desires. It's good to have desires, but then the kind of thinking and the kind of uh, motivation that made them to have those desires, the attribute that pervaded their desires. Number three, the attachment that precipitated their decisions. They had come out of Egypt. They were still attached to Egypt. They said they were not part of Egypt anymore and they sang when those Egyptians drowned in the sea. But now they're going to talk about is it not better to go back to Egypt? The attachment that precipitated their decisions. Look at number one. Number one, the attitude that preceded their demand. Look at that, Exodus 17 again, looking at verse 3. It says in Exodus chapter 17, verse 3, And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses, murmuring, complaining, finding fault. Why is this and why is that? That was the thing that preceded their demand and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us? To kill us. Look at them. That the person, Moses, who sacrificed everything in her, and did not uh, look at his own luxury, his own convenience, even his own life, the preservation of his life. The one that went to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, don't come here anymore. The next time you come here and you demand, let my people go, I'll deal with you and kill you. You see, that person that had given his life, and so that they will come out of slavery. And they will come out of the iron furnace and they will get into the land flowing with milk and honey. They said, now you want to kill us and kill our children and our cattle with us. That was their attitude. I pray that attitude will not be in the children of God at this time. In Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 14 verse 2. In Numbers chapter 14, reading from verse 2, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in this wilderness? There are people that say they pray, they pray, they pray. But their prayer has a negative connotation. Their prayer has a negative foundation. Their prayer has a negative thought. They're not looking at the promises of God. They're not looking at the future. They're not looking at the land flowing with milk and honey. All they're looking at, there's no water, there's no food, and we don't have the... We even want to die. What did each we die in Egypt? All the time, death is on the top of their tongue and every little problem die 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 thank god i am not in their class i say thank god i am not in their class i can't hear you you see the children of israel they had different classes moses and aaron 
were not in the class, the general class. Caleb and Joshua were not in that class, the murmuring class. They singled out themselves. And when all the people were saying, why didn't we die? Why didn't we die? Even in this wilderness, why don't we die? I will not die in the wilderness. I come out of that class. I said I come out of that class. The class of murmurers. And the class of complainers. And the class of grumblers. The class of the people that never see. We can lay by the face and the word of God. And we remain alive. And nothing will kill us. What did not kill us in Egypt will not kill us in the wilderness. What did not kill us as sinners will not kill us as saints. If death was available in Egypt and then they were to be drowned in the sea and all of them were to die and the Lord preserved their lives and they didn't die in Egypt, how is it? What did not kill you in Egypt will kill you in the wilderness. I will not die. You will not die. You must not die. There is a Lord, the Lord has provided for you, and you are going to do. You will not die before the fulfillment of your ministry in Jesus' name. That was their attitude. But thank God I come out of that class. Thank God I come out of that class. And when I see other people and they are murmuring and they are complaining and they are grumbling, I say, that's his class, that's his class. But me, I'm not in that class. I will not complain. I will not murmur. I will not chide. I will not fight. All I will do is to live by the faith of the Son of God. All I will do is to love by the love of the Son of God. All I will do is to keep on moving in the grace of Jesus, the grace of the Son of God. Look at number two here. Number two is the attribute that pervaded their desire. The attribute that pervaded their desire. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. In verse 11, it says, Now all these things happened unto them. For examples, and they were reaching for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. It's telling us something here. What happened at the beginning? of their journey out of the world is going to also show up again at the end of the world. And when it happened at the beginning of the world, all their response, all the attribute, anything they could do was to murmur, to grumble, and to complain. And then he's telling us, for us now who are at this end of the line, and we're very close to the land of Canaan. And we're very close to entering into the promised land. It says now, all these things happened unto them. For example, and they're reaching for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. I will not be like them. You will not be like them. You'll be like the people in the higher class. Where are you? And then the goodness of God, the power of God will move in your life as you live, not by the unbelief of the mixed, mixed multitude, but you live by the faith of Jesus. It tells us in Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2 Verse 14, and it says, do all things. How many things? Church talk now. How many things? You're not used to preaching now in the morning. You only come for a Bible study evening, evening. If you're all right this morning, I said, how many things? 
do all things let me explain in your family do all things without murmuring and disputing in your place of work whether it's spiritual work secular work do all things without murmurings and disputings in your market and salesmanship you know there are people every time is government every time is because of this regime every time they complain every time they complain against the government they complain against the church they complain against the governors they complain against the pastors they complain against the weather they complain against the weed, against the heat they complain because of the sunshine they complain because of the rain they complain because of everything they say it's them they never see the fault in themselves but the lord is saying do all things without memories and disputes be it fulfilled in our lives in jesus name number three is the attachment that pre precipitated their decisions look at numbers chapter 14 verse 2 and all the children of israel murmured against moses and against aaron and the whole congregation said, what a pity here. You know, you can have meetings, conferences, and then you have great things revealed. And then, like a cancerous kind of cell, one individual, like a cell in the body, receives the cancer of murmuring, the cancer of disputing, the cancer of complaining, the cancer of argument. And that one cell of cancer in the body spreads and spreads and spreads. And we do not understand what is going on. By the time you will check up and you get to the hospital, and then the doctor said it's reached the final stage the whole body now is cancerous every part of the body has that cancer and now death the death of that body is about to take place and the children of israel murmured against moses and aaron and the whole congregation, what started as a sport and what started as a cell, a cancerous cell in the body of the children of Israel now has pervaded everywhere. And this precipitated all their demands now. Okay, if we're going to go forward, I about water. If we're going to rise up, I about this need. If this is going to take place, I about this need. The whole congregation of the children of Israel, they now say, would God were died in the land of Egypt? Or would God were died in this wilderness? Look at verse 3 here. In verse 3, it says, And wherefore, as the Lord brought us unto this land, uh, you know, the people who murmur and complain, they forget that says they are not consistent in their language. The other time they said, Why hast thou, Moses, brought us up out of the land? Another time they said, Why is it that you, Moses, and Aaron brought us out? Now they even go away from the human realm. They said, Wherefore, as the Lord brought us unto this land, to fall by the sword uh -uh. what's happening here now where is the sword and where is the enemy and where are the destroyers i thought the problem was water i saw the problem was food and now they are saying you want to kill us by the sword that our wives our children should be a prey why not better 
Look at this. Were ye not better for us to return into Egypt? That's the attachment to Egypt that precipitated their decision. And they said, this is what we want to do now. Are there people like that who say they are Christians, they are children of God, they are born again, a little need here, and it should have gone to the promise of God, ask, it shall be given unto you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, it shall be opened unto you, for everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened, and the promise is there, he has given us all things that pertain to life, and to godliness and the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Instead of looking at those promises, they want to die in the wilderness. They are complaining about God. He has not made the provision after, after Calvary has been settled, after Christ has provided everything and he that spared not his only begotten son, but he gave him up for us. How they shall he not freely give us all things that they're not thinking about that. They are thinking about, you know, what do we have? What has seed done? Why it not better for us to go back and return into Egypt? You will not return into Egypt. All you have is available for you in the kingdom of God. The water of life is available. The bread of life is available. The power is available. Provision is available. Salvation available. Deliverance available. Sanctification, holiness available. And all the needs of your life until your joy will be full. Everything is available. And the Lord said that he has given us everything pertaining to life and to virtue and to glory and to godliness everything is available why don't we open our eyes and then see and come with the might of Christ and come with the faith of Jesus and come with the love of God and like a child will ask the father like a son like a daughter will ask the parents we ask simply with the right attitude and with the right attribute and with the right attachment and all our needs will be provided and supplied in Jesus name somebody shout amen, amen. leave the class of murmurers we should have graduated from that all these many years leave the class of grumblers leave the class of complainers come higher and then as you come higher your faith comes higher your love comes higher and your sacrifice absolute surrender comes higher your consecration comes higher your dependence upon the lord comes higher everything will be yours everything will be mine everything will be mine Number two, now point number two. Undeniable drinking for life from the smithing rock. Undeniable, you will drink. I said you will drink. Undeniable drinking for life from the smithing rock. Look at Exodus chapter 17, verse 5. And the Lord said, unto Moses hold on you know in leadership whether you are house fellowship leader zona leader a district pastor a group pastor a state overseer a region overseer a national overseer many times when the people speak and they murmur and they complain and they mention your name like they mentioned the name of Moses. And then it goes from one to the other. This one is talking against Moses. That one is talking against Aaron. That one is picking up a stone to stone Caleb or Joshua. That one is talking about the leader. Why? Why did they do that? Why did they remove that? Why did they go that way? 
Why are we going through this path? Why is the condition like this? Don't they know what other churches are doing? Why are we doing it like this? When it is like that, when God speaks to you, like he spoke to Moses, you will not hear. You are too much involved with what the people are saying. You're too much involved with the complaints of the people. You're too much involved with the criticisms of the people. And when God now speaks to you to give you the solution to the problem, because He will give solution to every problem. I said He will give solution to every problem. You cannot hear, you cannot see. Because the utterances of the people, the criticisms of the people, the memories of the people now takes over your life and then it blocks your hearing, it blocks your perception and it blocks your heart and you cannot hear. But thank God Moses was in this higher class and all the things they were saying down below, he knew. What he was saying down below. But that did not affect him as God spoke now. He heard the voice of the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand and go. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, behold, I will stand before thee, I, the Almighty, I, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the earth, I, greater than all the children of Israel put together, I, greater than the whole nation of Israel, I, greater than all the Hivites and all the Jebusites and all the Hittites and all the Canaanites, I, greater than the whole world put together, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock and thou shalt smite the rock, and thou shalt smite the rock, and sh there shall come water out of it. Thank God for leaders that do not argue with the Almighty God. Oh God, I never heard of that before. I never heard that water will come out of a dry rock, a solid rock. I've not read in science that water will come out of a solid dry rock. You see, there are people, they're always going back to the knowledge of the world and the knowledge of the earth. And they think that they are doing well and they, they're even proud of it. They said, I studied geology. And as I studied geology, all the strats, all the stratas in the rock has no water at all. Uh -huh. You have more knowledge than the almighty God. You do not understand that God will work and he will work higher and greater and different from all those laws of nature. Thank God Moses did not argue and thank God you will not argue. When the word of God comes and the word of God proposes the solution to the problem we have, you will not say, is that all? Is that all they are going to say? Is that how the solution will come? That's how your solution will come. Your solution will come from heaven. Your solution will come from what God is saying. It says, I will stand there before thee. There upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did. There are people that hear, they don't do. There are people, all the things we have heard 
from the beginning of the workers retreat they've even jotted down notes but they don't do they just do as they used to do they seek as they used to think and they live as they used to live and they pray as they used to pray but moses immediately heard of this incredible solution of this seemingly impossible solution and moses did so in the sight of the elders of israel and water came out for you water will come out for you life abundance will come out for you all the provision of god will come through that rock the rock that followed them was christ your all your solution everything will come from christ the rock in jesus name three things number one provided water of life from the smithing rock provided water of life from the smithing rock number two purifying washing by the lord a sanctifying redeemer number three promised water without limit from the supernatural river let's look at number one provided water of life from the smitten rock it will come i said it will come look at john chapter 4 verse 10 john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 10 jesus answered and said unto her if thou knewest the gift of god and he and who it is that saith unto thee give me to drink thou shouldest have asked of him and he would have given you the living water praise the lord he'll give you the living water I said he'll give you the living water look at verse 14 in verse 14 but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. We can have that. We must have that. And we have this spring of living water coming from Christ and coming from the rock of ages. And it will satisfy every need, spiritual, material, natural, domestic, professional. It will satisfy every need of your life in Jesus' name. Look at number two. Number two here is the purifying washing by the Lord, our sanctifying Redeemer. He has redeemed us. He has saved us. He has regenerated us. He has forgiven our sins. He has taken our sins away. And now he wants to do more in our lives. He will do more in your life. I said you will do more in your life. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The word acts like water. Cleansing, purging, purifying making holy and righteous refreshing transforming every area of your life that he might sanctify and cleanse each the church with the washing of water by the word look at verse 27 it says that he might present it to himself a glorious church when the water comes it's the living water is the refreshing water is the cleansing water is the purifying water is the sanctifying water of the word when it comes to everyone in the church you will be glorious the church will be glorious i said you'll be glorious and the church will be glorious that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot 
the water will wash all that away or wrinkle the water will so refresh you and you'll become like a little child innocent or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish the lord confirmed that in every member every minister of the church in jesus name look at ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean and from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. He will do it. I said he will do it. Verse, tw verse 26. And a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. Hold on. What do we do with the heart? We we'll think of the heart, we we'll plan of the heart, we we'll make propositions from the heart, and we we'll think deep from the heart. I bought the spirit, the same thing, a new spirit. Will I put within you now? How can I claim I have a new heart? I'm still thinking the old way. How can I claim I have a new spirit? And I'm still murmuring and complaining and grumbling and criticizing like the old life. If there's a new heart, if there is a new spirit, our thinking becomes new. Our direction becomes new. Our action becomes new. Everything we do becomes new because we have a new heart and because we have a new spirit a new heart also will i give you now if you see that there's no new language is the old criticism is the old murmuring is the old complaining is the old tiredness is the old giving up and there is no newness in your thoughts in your life go back to calvary why are we carrying a theoretic sanctification why are we carrying a dormant sanctification and why are we testifying of a sanctification that is only historical and it doesn't have the newness of heart and the newness of spirit when god says he's going to give us a purifying washing by the lord our sanctifying redeemer what that means is he'll give us a new heart and put that within us and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh now if something is taken away that thing is no more in manifestation a stony heart a solid heart a heart that is not tender that is not tempered a heart that is stubborn a heart that is rebellious a heart that is rigid that's not in your heart it's a stony heart and the lord is saying i'm going to take out of you the stony heart the rigid heart the stubborn heart the heart that is not yielding that is not bending the heart that goes on living and thinking like the old life it says he'll take that away and i will give you an heart of flesh tender and soft and then flexible and it can be tendered it can be made to go in the way of the lord that's what god has promised and that's what god will do he'll do it in everyone he'll do it for everyone in jesus name 
you know I'm going to say, give me a good amen. amen. Number three now. Number three is the promised water without limit from the supernatural river. The promised water without limit from the supernatural river in John chapter 7. Reading from verse 37. John chapter 7. Reading from verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, this is for you. I said, This is for you. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. No matter the depths of the thirst, the height of the thirst, come, come unto me and drink. Look at verse 38. It says, He that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. From outside comes the heat, from outside comes the weariness, from outside comes the weather, from outside comes the tiredness. But then from the inside, as you come unto him and you drink, he that believeth on me. With the faith of Jesus, with the faith of the Son of God, he that believeth on me, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, and yet not I, but the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He has given himself, and now he says we can come and drink, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What does that mean? Verse 39, in verse 39, but they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him, or the faith of the Son of God, that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He is now glorified, and because of that, we can believe. Well, that faith of Jesus and rivers of living water, the baptism in the Holy Ghost and the untiring, relentless power of the Spirit will be upon our lives and then we'll move on in that power, we'll move on in that strength, we'll move on in that ever-flowing river that is coming from the river of life, coming into our hearts and then moving, uh, moving us on with revived and renewed energy. It will happen in your life in Jesus' name. We come to point number three. Point number three, the unsurpassable destiny after life with the spotless rock. We're looking at Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 15. And thou and givest them bread from heaven for their hunger, and broughtest forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst and promise them that they should go into the in to possess the land which thou art sworn to give them understand he gave them bread so that they have the strength to get to the land he promised them he gave them water so that they'll have the freshness of energy and the freshness of the strength to go on to the promised land. Everything God does for us should make us have a step further, a step higher to the promised land and to the place the Lord 
has provided for us the destiny of the saints, the destiny of the righteous. Look at three things. Number one, looking up steadfastly beyond drinking and eating. Don't let us forget that. Looking up steadfastly beyond drinking and eating. Number two, living on sacrificially for destiny beyond earth. Don't forget that whatever we have on earth, bread, water, miracle, healing, strength, job, husband, wife, children, profession, promotion, success, whatever we have on earth should lead us a step, another step further to the promised land, living on sacrificially for destiny beyond earth. Number three, lifting up souls to dine with the eternal. We're lifting up other people. We're raising up other people. We're counseling other people. We're discipling other people. We're helping other people that they eventually will dine with the eternal. Number one, looking up steadfastly beyond drinking and eating. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Verse 29, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until, keep on looking forward to this, until, look up steadfastly for this, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Whatever we have in this wilderness of our journey, and whatever we drink, whatever we possess in this wilderness of the world, we must keep on looking forward until that day when we eat and drink with the Lord in the kingdom of God. Verse, it tells us in Revelation chapter 7, reading from verse 17. Revelation 7, verse 17. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them. He's talking about when we get over there. He's talking about when you get over there. You'll get there. I said you'll get there. As you live by faith. As you live in love. As you live without the attitude and the attribute of the old life. As you do all things without murmuring without complaining, without disputing. By the grace of God, your name is there. Your inheritance is there. The Lord is waiting for you. Anything and everything that will hinder you from getting there, the Lord will cut it from your life. You will get there. I will get there. I must get there. If in this world only, we have hope in Christ, water in Christ, bread in Christ, job in Christ, wife in Christ, through Christ, and we have children through Christ. If only in this world we have miracle through Christ, and then there's no resurrection, and then there's no rapture, and then we don't make it, will be of all men the most miserable. That's why we're looking beyond what we have here on earth and we're looking up 
to that time steadfastly when or eat and drink with the Lord himself for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes from your eyes from our eyes we're going to be there on the final day in Jesus name look at number two here number two is living on sacrificially living on sacrificially what that means is as you started the life of self-denial years gone by when you knew the Lord and the Lord spoke to you I want you to be a special peculiar person individual in my kingdom and I have a great assignment for you but we're going to do that assignment on the basis that you deny yourself and you sacrifice whatever you have to sacrifice to live purposely for my calling and then you sacrifice you're consecrated you you left everything for the lord i'm going to do that but no you know that's the beginning that you live on the sacrifice of 30 years ago must not be higher than the sacrifice of today the consecration of 10 years ago must not be higher than the consecration of today you are living on perpetually and sacrificially with all consecration the time you give to the lord five years ago should not be more than the time you are giving to the lord at this time now the readiness with which you gave yourself to wanting to serve the lord a few years ago must not be higher than what you have today and the esteem you have for other people that you esteem others better than yourself in the past if any newcomer any new worker any new preacher any new overseer if he comes then you say welcome brother welcome sister and then you give them space you don't say what's he going to do what's she going to do the sacrifice you add at that time that you will give chance to other people even if they take your title even if they take your position that same sacrifice you add at that time you live on sacrificially you don't do anything today methodically politically and in a worldly way to say i'm going to keep this position i'm going to give, keep this attitude the active service the renewed service the sacrificial service that you gave to the lord in years gone by it must still be there today but if now it's all politics if now is uh, the method of the world and then to turn things so that everything still comes back to your table that's not right if we're going to see the lord beyond the earth and beyond this period in which we are living we live on sacrificially for destiny desirable destiny beyond the earth the lord fulfill it in your life the lord fulfill it in every life in jesus name and look at this matthew chapter 24 we're reading from verse 35 it says heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away except he be converted and become as little children ye can in no wise see the kingdom of god heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away 
the kings of this world have dominion over others but it shall not be so among you but he that will be the chief among you let him be the servant of all heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees the righteousness of the politicians and the ministers of the world except your righteousness except your humility except your giving yourself to the lord will exceed the righteousness and the politics and the planning of the people of this world ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of god that word will never pass away heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away somebody shout a great amen, amen. verse 36 it says but of that day and hour no is no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only in verse 37 it says but at the days of Noah war, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Verse 39 says, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away the flood came and took them all away the edge they drank the flood came and took them all away they married and they gave in marriage and the flood came and took them all away they appeared to live a good life physically a luxurious life and then they had everything physical everything natural they knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be and i pray when the lord shall come your destiny beyond the earth will be guaranteed in jesus name number three now number three is lifting up souls to die with the eternal you are helping other people and you are convincing other people you're preaching to other people and you're saying it's about to come and because the lord is about to come come in come in if they say no you get back to them again it is not the will of god that anyone should perish and your will is the same in agreement in attachment with the will of god and as god is not willing that any of them should perish you also you are not willing that any of the people will perish and they will not perish if you go to them if you preach to them if you help them to lift up their eyes from the earth and you lift up their eyes to eternity that as you are prepared and you are ready by the grace of God you are preparing them and getting them ready they'll be ready I said they will be ready and the Lord will help you working for God you will not be tired I will not be tired you will not be weary I will not be weary then you go on and on until as many as possible hundreds thousands of people millions of people you make them to see it with the lord now take of his salvation have of the new life have of the new heart have of the new spirit and prepare them for the coming of the lord that you lift up millions of souls to dine with the eternal will you do it I said, will you do it? 
will you do it look at luke chapter 14 verse 23 luke chapter 14 verse 23 and the lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled is not talking about this house in my father's house are many mansions a lot of room in heaven a lot of space in heaven if it were not so i would have told you and i go to prepare a place for you he prepares a place for everyone and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you all those who have come into the kingdom unto myself so that where i am there ye may be also in the father's house many mansions and there's still room for thousands and still room for millions and the lord is telling us go out into the highways and edges and compel them to come in that his house may be filled will you obey the lord i said will you obey the lord i will i will i will revelation chapter 19 verse 6 in revelation chapter 19 verse 6 and i heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah for the lord god omnipotent reigns he will reign over the earth he will reign in all of heaven it will reign and now he wants to reign in your heart he wants to reign in your life he wants his decision he wants his project he wants his commission to be the uttermost part of your life the greatest thing in your life so that as he's going to reign in the world to come he reigns in your heart, in your world today. And then it says, The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice. Those who have labored, let us be glad and rejoice. Those who made themselves ready, let us be glad and rejoice. Those who did, the whole will of God with their whole heart all through their lives and now they make it on that final day let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife and his bride and the church and the body of Christ saved sanctified baptized filled with the holy ghost his wife has made herself ready verse 8 it says and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints look at verse 9 in verse 9 he tells us and he says unto me right blessed are they that are called to the marriage supper of the lamb he says unto me these are the true saints of god all we have heard today that the lord is coming and the lord provides now living fountains of waters and we can come and drink salvation available sanctification holiness available and the overflowing river of the holy ghost 
baptism, immersion, power in the Holy Ghost available today. And all that we need that will equip us to be all that we need to be and to do all we need to do in the work of the kingdom. Everything is available and it says come and drink come and take come and partake that you will be ready on that final day and then from now on you live sacrificially you labor sacrificially you work sacrificially you serve sacrificially and when it comes great will be your reward in jesus name why don't you rise up now and say lord i've had your word I've received your word like in the olden days when I had the word for the first time I receive it now in my heart oh Lord come and fill me to overflowing and give me all the strength all the power all the energy all the consecration all the absolute surrender I need I will serve you open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer